I've got a client who has a Fender Deluxe Reverb reissue. It's a good app, but the molded plastic speaker cable plug combo those come with is just crappy. So we're going to be making a new speaker cable for him using the Switchcraft right angle. Pretty standard right angle pancake kind of thing. I've got this old defective pedal that would cost more than it's worth to fix. So I use it as a, as a plug holder when I do this kind of thing. If I was really fancy, I'd probably get a 2x4 and drill a quarter inch hole in it and do the same thing, but this works just fine. It's got a little bit of wobble, but I'll work around it. The first thing I want to do is plan where the cable's going to go. So I've got this nice, uh, I think it's Marshall or Sound Runner uh, 16 gauge. And I like to use the one with the stripe for the negative. I'm not sure if there's actually an industry standard on that. I've seen it both ways, but I like to do it this way. So I can see that I want to remove the ground jacket to about there. As I drop a guitar pick. So I don't know if I can show all of this uh, on screen, but using strippers. Strippers and blow, strippers and blow. Blow being bubble gum, of course. So then I like to twist all that together. And then before I do anything else, let me uh, get the solder handy. I like to tend the very end of it so it's less likely to... Can you see that? Yeah, tend the very end so it's not going to fray as I move it. So let me... The only downside of this Hakko FX951 is it uh, times out. It goes to sleep, so when I pick it up, it takes a second to come back to temperature. Just tending the very end so it won't... Uh, unravel and fray on me and I will be able to bend that into the shape I want and that tells me that I want to strip to about there for the center so I'll mark that with my thumbnail there are other ways to do this whatever way works for you I don't care if you don't like my way find what works better for you uh, I happen to have a thumbnail uh, which I, you know, it looks like I got a Fu Manchu. I use it for acoustic guitar primarily, but I also find having that little bit of, of leverage helps with what I do on the bench. I can grab a lot of things better with that. And if I can mark a, a bit of a, of a jacket or insulation like I just did. And then I'll go ahead and tend this whole thing. I don't need this whole length, but I like to have it to start. I need about that much of it right there. So I'll go ahead and snip that. That much. And I'm going to go ahead and put some solder in the cup. But before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and rough up the inner surface here where the uh, ground is going to go. Because it's easier to do before the wire is in place. So let me just rotate this so I have a better angle. And you can use a little bit of sandpaper. You can use a Dremel bit as long as it doesn't remove too much. I find just going in here and roughing up the finish in a, like a crosshatch with a hardened flathead. Uh, I get in trouble for saying flathead on that. Hardened uh, slotted screwdriver. Usually does the trick. I'm working with a pretty hot iron. I've got it set to 750. Waiting for the beep. I spend a lot of my time these days waiting for that beat. So I heat it up and I give it just a little bit of solder, mostly for that flux, which helps uh, spread the heat before I add a lot of solder. I want to get just the surfaces to start to tin. That'll do it. Doesn't take a lot. And then I'll go ahead and put some solder here. If I sound weird, I'm getting off axis uh, from the microphone as I bend over. I want to make that sure that's hot and that the solder is really sticking to it. All right, now I will take the wire and I'll put the center conductor in that solder I just did. Not sure how well this is going to come across on the camera. Let that set up, and then I can bend it over. 
And now I will just kind of curve this with my finger. And I know it's going to go where I want it to go. And I can see I'm going to have a little bit of excess. So I'm going to go ahead and tin this part and then snip off the excess. I like things to be neat, even when no one sees them. Holding myself to that kind of standard of not taking shortcuts means fewer things come back to bite me in the butt. As much as possible, do it right the first time. And that little bit of wire that flew off, I'll find that later when I'm walking barefoot in the room. Such is the way of things. It's like, uh, if I can't find a part, and I know I've got a bag of them, and I look and I look and I look and I can't find them, the best way to find them is to order some more, at which point you find what uh, you already had. All right, here's the old crappy cable, and this is how long it is. This is the new cable, and I'm going to go a little bit longer than the old one, just to have a little bit of extra, extra room, and I'll snip that. And now I can toss this because they're, they're junk. And uh, I want to be able to slide a little bit of insulation on here just to thicken this up before I close it because this is great cable, but it's not as thick in diameter with the jacket as uh, a lot of uh, cables are designed, as the cable was designed, sorry, the plug was designed to accept a thicker cable. So we're just going to beef that up with some shrink wrap. I don't like it for it to extend out and be really visible when it's done. I like it to kind of just be tucked inside. All you need is the part here that's in the clamped section. All right, let's put the back on now. And it's easier to get them started with a small screwdriver, a small slot headed screwdriver, and then do the final torquing with a slightly larger one that fits better in the slot, but the larger one it's got a lot of wobble when you get started and it's really hard to get them to go in. And you definitely want to do this on a surface where you can, it's not going to drop off on the floor. These screws are very small. Probably should have put a towel down just to keep it from bouncing. So I've, I put them in place roughly with a small flathead. Then use a larger one that really fills the, the slot before I do any of the torquing. Now, those are really tight. If you want to, at this point, you can put some uh, uh, Loctite or just a dab of clear nail polish on there. I will do that once I'm sure that everything is good and I won't need to go in there and make any changes. I don't think, I, I can't imagine why I would, but. All right, that's very well secured. The little ribs there grabbed the insulation. That's a nice bit of wire. I'm gonna go ahead and separate this end a little bit. Use a straight razor blade just to get it started. And uh, once again, I want to have about that much. Let's see what that what that is. That's uh, about a half inch. So using my Fu Manchu uh, thumbnail, I've marked the half inch mark on this. I'm gonna strip these each off. And I did that closer to me off camera because I needed to be able to see it and make sure I was hitting that mark. Um, I can't hunch over real close to the work right now because of my back. I uh, thank everyone for the kind comments the past couple of days. I do not need a surgeon. I do not need a corrupter, chiropractor, or whatever. Um, it is not a herniated disc or a bulging, bulging disc or anything. It was just a pull, pulling a muscle. There's nothing related to the spine or the nerves or the discs. I could tell by the where the pain was. It was all on the left side. Not a kidney. Just a good old fashioned pulled muscle. And like before, I like to tend the ends of them because I'm gonna twit I'm gonna make hooks of these and wrap them around the lugs of the speaker. And I don't want them to come loose and fray. So I've got to wait for that beep again. There you go. I don't recall if I mentioned I'm working at 750 degrees because I knew I had to solder to that shell 
of the uh, plug. I'll probably go up to 800, but 800 can kind of melt the, can kind of burn the flux. 700 would do for everything else uh, in, in most amps. Some some tur stubborn turrets and eyelets want to go up to 750, 800. But I'm about to do the speaker lugs. I want to work hot and fast, so I'm going to keep it at 750. Let me get the amp out and see if I can do this to the speaker uh, with the chassis in place. All right, the first thing I want to do is put a cloth behind the uh, lugs where I'm going to be soldering. This is a vintage 30, so it protects the cone from any solder spatter or drips. Usually I would use a paper towel uh, because it's easier and I can fit it in there very easily. Uh, but uh, I didn't want a big bunch of white to be reflective in this shot. So I'm using this rag. So my stripe is my negative. That's going to go here. So my positive goes here. I want to separate them a little bit more. And what I do typically is I go in. I bend it over on itself. Hopefully the audio is okay. I'm ducking over and into this big wooden box a lot. Um, that's a very strong magnet. Well done, Celestian. I'm gonna hook that over on itself like that. So it's got a very strong mechanical connection. Before I solder it, I can kind of crimp it like this. And uh, if I had done this without tinning the end of this first, all this would have frayed. I just would have had wires going in every direction. So I'll do the same thing here. Now, technically, I've got a little excess that I could trim off, but it's not going to be a problem. It'll just be part of the hole once it's all soldered. So now, making sure I don't burn the new wire, I want to solder these. Wait for the, wait for the magic beep. Thank you, Celestian, for having pretend lugs. Makes all this very easy. Warehouse does the same. Sadly, eminence lugs are usually not tinned. In fact, they're usually coated with something because I think they were just expecting everyone to use quick connects, which I don't like. Um, so if this were an eminent speaker, nothing wrong with eminent speakers, but they're pain in the butt when it comes to soldering, typically. I would have to go in there and with some, maybe an emery board or something, and uh, rough up the coating and then tent it before I could do any soldering. Otherwise, it would just drip off, drip off, and be a headache, and everything gets superheated. And... No, thank you. So I've got very good solder joints there. No drips, no excess, uh, no gaps. But more importantly, I've got that mechanical connection first. So the solder is there for its electronic function more than its uh, uh, stick to is not there as glue. So now if everything's working right, I should be able to use my meter and this will read whatever the speaker is. In this case, 8 ohms, so it'll measure 6.9. That's correct. That's 7. Um, the 8 ohm speaker rarely measures 8 ohms precisely with a meter due to the way uh, the meters measure versus how speakers are measured. But that means I've got, it's not shorted and I have continuity. I pretty much knew that I would, but it's nice to verify if you have questions. Whenever you wire up uh, a speaker cab, say it's a 4x12, always confirm with your meter as you go if necessary before you hook an amp up to it. Because if you get it wrong and it damages the amp, you'll be cussing yourself for a long time. Having confirmed all the connections, put this back in place, power it on, and we'll listen uh, for sound. If you wonder why I didn't use the standby switch, this Deluxe Reverb has a tube rectifier, GZ34. Standby is totally not necessary all right, it works just fine. I know the amp was already working. The speaker's fine because I tested it with the old uh, cable first. So this amp is ready to be buttoned up. So let me put the old, the old rear panel back in place and start doing the paperwork. Thanks for watching.